start the recording. And uh, last week, I've created uh, this project and named it Timer, okay? So what I did was I created a timer. Uh, we have a recording of um, uh, the settings that we changed on the project to make sure it's, it's uh, referencing correct libraries. And this time it was a Win32 project. We have, I posted video recordings on that, so you, you'll find uh, back reference to, to, to these steps. What I'm going to do today is that I'm going to uh, open the Fluid program, which you know acts as a, a user interface designer. And uh, although I did some work already here with Fluid, I am going to redo it. Uh, from scratch, so we have a fresh start basically on everything that happens here. So, um, let me jump to my D drive, uh, say yes, 255. <coughs> so, here's a copy of Fluid that I compiled and saved on my D drive. If you did the same and you have like a portable drive with Fluid, you should be able to run it too. So if I double click on it, it opens its designer. So let's uh, start from scratch. Well, thing, uh, thing that I did, thing number one, was that I said, okay, uh, let's start a new project. Uh, essentially, the set of steps is to start a new project. And the only template that we have is blank. So we're just going to say, okay, that's going to be our thing. And right away, I am clicking Save As, and I am going to save my, my Fluid project. So to save it, I will use my, um, my um, portable drive where I kept my project. So let's see, View Details, go to Projects, and go to Timer. And under this project, if you recall, I have created a, a, a subdirectory named Fluid Project specifically to keep Fluid generated data. E essentially, this will be our source files generated by Fluid for our user interface in this particular subdirectory. So I'm pointing save to from my Fluid application with like empty, there's nothing in it to uh, this uh, location right here, fluidtimerui.fl, and saving it. Okay, so replace, yes. So I just effectively killed everything I did last week inside Fluid. So, but that's, uh, I'm doing it on purpose so I can repeat those steps. So this time, uh, I'm going to start a new, uh, so uh, to begin with, I guess I will start with new code, uh, new code, and I'm going to say new class. Interestingly, the, the library, the graphics library, comes with predefined classes, already, already designed classes, for windows and buttons and all kind of widgets, uh, like scroll bars and text boxes, and option buttons, all of these that you can see on the widget bin thing that shows up. Uh, at the same time, in order to get organized and somehow start working with the window itself, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use all of these, including windows and some buttons, I'm going to use it as class members of my own class. And originally, Fluid maintains this class for me because I can then use the Fluid Designer so that, you know, I can drag and drop things and resize and position uh, in specific places. It's actually quite readable and not very difficult to deal with if you look at the result. So that's why, to begin with, my first step is not to add a window, uh, but to actually add a class which will contain the window. It is going to be my own class, originally managed by Fluid. So clicking new class, and it just tells me, okay, what do you think should be the name? And I'm going to type in the Fluid Timer UI. Uh, so uh, somehow I have to name my classes so that they're, um, you know, they're recognizable 
and I need to know which class belongs to fluid, which class belongs to my own, uh, you know, res results of my own programming. So uh, I will kind of prefix and give it the name C, which stands for class, fluid, timer, UI, all capitalized words uh, over there. So uh, no need to uh, specify any subclass, just say OK, right? So I just created this uh, piece. Now, interestingly, you can say, um, where is it? You can say file, um, where is it? Uh, Uh, show source code. I was looking for this. So I just added a class and there is a way for me to peek at the generated code. Uh, at this point I'm not sure if this recording is going to capture it properly so I'm actually going to switch the resolution to some basic resolution here. Um, let's uh, try this. Um, you know what, let me first stop the recording. <coughs> 